Hello everyone and a happy new year. A few weeks ago I unboxed the Atari VCS 800 and I picked it up for about a hundred bucks uh, from the Atari website directly and I thought that that was a smoking deal but then I learned that you could get it for about 80 bucks for the same package from Walmart on Black Friday. But nonetheless I still think it's a great deal because you get two controllers, you get the classic controller and the joystick controller and you get the full Atari black walnut version with the uh, nice wood trim on it. So today on Spice Vader, we're gonna dig into a RAM and SSD upgrade. We're gonna compare the 45 watt stock TDP versus the 54 watt upgraded TDP. And we're gonna see if we can make this a decent casual living room gaming rig for 2025. So let's take apart this Atari. I'm gonna use my iFixit toolkit here. The first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is use a Torx T10 bit. And then you can lift these little flaps here and that'll let you remove the screws. Once all the screws are out, it should just be as easy as pulling off the sides or the back and front, I should say. Make sure you don't have any USB devices plugged in. So I would start at the top of the back piece and just kinda work your hand across. You could use a spudger, but you might risk like scratching or marring the case a little bit. Then once you get the back off, you can kind of just peel it open and the front piece should pop off. You want to be careful here because you have an antenna wire. What I like to do is just take the wireless card out. The next thing we're going to want to do is start taking off the heat shield here. So once you take these three screws out, the heat shield will lift off. Be careful of the fan cord here. Then the next thing we're gonna do is take off the heat sink assembly dealio here. And this will need to switch to a bigger screw, bigger Phillips bit. So I'm just gonna use a PH2 bit here. And then we'll undo the little fan cable here. Then we should be able to lift off the whole assembly. Yeah, they just use a thermal pad here, which is insufficient in my opinion. We're gonna replace this with thermal paste. So yeah, you can just see that it's just a thermal pad. What we wanna make sure we do before we go forward is to pop these little levers. Here, pop them, pull these out. These are for the USB ports on the front. So do the same with the other side. Pop it, pull it. Then let's take the screws out. Uh, back to our Torx T10 for these. I believe there's a screw here that's holding the little light. Take off this screw. Now we should be able to lift the board up. There's our RAM slots. So what am I gonna use? I am going to install the cheapest set of DDR4 3216 gigs I could find on Amazon. Yeah, we'll just take out the Kingston RAM that it has right now. So how do we do that? Super easy. Pop the little tabs on the side. They bounce out. And you'll want to put in the replacement stick on the lower side first. Put it in at a slight angle. Put in the top stick. Push it down. Just like that. Easy peasy. Now that we got the RAM installed, there really isn't much else to do over here. We can look at the CR2032 battery that they put capped on tape all over. Um, and that's it. We'll flip it back over. Uh, let's put our screws back in. It's a lot of work to get to those RAM sticks, but at least they're upgradable. You can go up to 32 gigs apparently, but I just don't think that's gonna be necessary on something so lightweight as this. Let's put the uh, ribbons back in and that's done. We're gonna wipe off that little piece of thermal paste and we're gonna scrape off the thermal pad off of here. There's your AMD Ryzen chip. 2016, ah yes, the cutting edge of technology nine years ago. Thanks Atari. We don't care, we got this cheap. So I'm gonna grab some Thermal Grizzly Hydronaut. I think that'll be plenty for this application. With the exposed die like this though, I like to spread it out manually. It's not perfect and I don't care about your comments about how you think it looks. Our main thing is to line this up straight, set it down so we're not moving it around a bunch. Okay, that's done. Now we want to install our M.2. 
Uh, this is just a 256 gig something I had laying around. The neat thing with mine is that it came with the Torx T10 screw for the M.2. Some of the earlier models, I believe, did not have this screw. Uh, I'll put in the thread dimensions and type of screw in case you need to get your own screw for this. So this port is an M.2 slot, um, but it's not NVMe, it only does SATA. So this is one of those wireless A plus E ports. It only does PCI Express at 1x speed. So you theoretically could put an eGPU on this. I will link a guide about somebody who did do one. But I'm not going to because I just don't think that the performance gain is going to be worth it. Now I've noticed that if you were to put it in, you kind of want it to sit right about there. But without a washer here and you crank that screw down, it'll do this. And it'll be like a slight bowing to the M.2. And I don't like that. I like it to sit flat. I found these uh, O-rings from, they're like keycap O-rings that I had laying around. So I'm just going to throw that on here and then we'll inspect it here. Yeah, that's not as bad as if it were to just sit straight down on it. So it's definitely an improvement. So that's it. That's the upgrades. We've got 16 gigs of RAM. We got an M.2 installed. Let's get into the bio, set the RAM speed properly, and then we'll uh, do some performance tests and see how it games after this. Now to take advantage of the upgrades, you'll have to get into the BIOS and set the RAM speed to use DDR4 at 3200 speeds. The way to get in is to mash the escape key and enter one of these passwords. If you've used the latest firmware from the Discord link, then you're gonna need to use the newer password. Once you're in the normal BIOS, go into AMD CBS, UMC common options, DDR4 common options, DRAM timing configuration, accept the overclock, then go to the memory clock speed, change it from auto to the new clock speed, you multiply it by two. Back up a couple steps and go to NBIO common option, GFX configuration, integrated graphics controller, set it to forces. Go to UMA mode, set UMA specified, go to the UMA frame buffer size, and I picked 4G for four gig of system RAM allocated for VRAM, and then back up a little bit and go to the system configuration, set it to the 54 watt POR configuration. Save and exit and then boot into Windows to see if the changes have taken effect. We can see the 16 gig plus 54 watt POR, the processor speed's holding at 3.4 gigahertz a lot more consistently. On the old setup with 45 watts, it was hanging around 2.7 to 3.4 gigahertz, kind of flipping back and forth. So now let's get into the main thing that you're all here for. I have better performance and overlay tools in Windows, so it'll be easier to compare stock and overclock gaming performance. And for 2025 going forward, I promise to use screen capture whenever possible instead of recording the screen with my camera. Uh, today will be easy since we have 1080p 60 and we'll only drop down to 720p to try and hit 60 FPS in a couple of games as we need to. I won't try to talk too much during these game tests, so I'll just let them run. The temps here, we're seeing way higher temps, over 100 degrees Celsius at times, before doing the thermal paste. And after the thermal paste, we're seeing high 80s, low 90s for max temps. And we're able to hit that 3.4 gigahertz speed a lot more consistently. You'll see that in the tests here as the game seem to have higher FPS most of the time.
Might get it to launch with more VRAM. So that was the game's test. It seems to work pretty good. There is noticeable improvement from removing the wattage limit. It's still not a powerhouse system, but a little more usable. The thermals improved by about 10 to 15 degrees Celsius, which makes me happier. Average FPS did improve slightly, though some games are still not what I would consider playable. So that's been my upgrade and nine game test of the Atari VCS 800. You may ask why I didn't try doing anything in the stock Atari OS. Well, I played with it for a few minutes and it doesn't interest me. The interface is slow and the store generally sucks because it basically wants you to buy every Atari game just to play it. I'd much rather buy those games on Steam or Epic and then play it on any system. You can check out other videos of what that experience is like if you want to see more. Now for the next VCS 800 video, I'll run through an install of a Steam OS distro. I'm thinking Bazite, but we'll find out when we get there. Stay tuned for that, and in the meantime, be sure to like and subscribe. Huge shout out to all of you for getting me to 800 subscribers. Let's keep pushing to the 1,000 subscriber goal. Until next time, thanks for watching, and God bless.